taking shots at the enemy I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy If I got something to say, you better let me speak Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything I pop off with the new rock Electronic, blow the sonic roof up I'm too honest when I take a few shots They're too toxic, need to take a new song And you cannot save me Cause I don't need saving Everything I've been chasing All here for the taking Don't wanna test your luck with me I think I've had enough disease I'm sick of all the bad thoughts People who are half guns You are not as tough as <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mario Romanelli again back with another episode of Into the Lion's Den here on the Heavy Hitter Network. So happy to be back. Uh, last week the Detroit Lions of course had a bye week. Uh, if you guys did check it out though, I did a special episode of Into the Lion's Den where it was then versus now. Uh, just kind of taking a look at where we stand as a team 20, 22 games in to the Dan Campbell regime versus the last 22 games prior to the Dan Campbell regime and just how the team stacks up. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely go back, check it out. Uh, I think you guys will really enjoy it. Uh, with that being said, though, we're back. Uh, Lions are back in action this week against the Dallas Cowboys. So we will definitely be breaking that all down, as always. We'll also be taking a quick sneak peek into week eight as to who uh, we've got in week eight. And also, I want to just take a quick moment to just kind of run through the NFL as a whole right now with six weeks in the books. What are some surprises coming out of the NFL? Definitely so far, I got to say Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, uh, the way they've been playing so far this year, I think is surprising. Um, these are two veterans that every year they just seem to find a way to, you know, come out there no matter who the wide receivers are, they they're dealt with. Um, no matter what the situation is uh, with the other teams in the divisions. But both teams really, I think, playing under the potential uh, that people felt coming into the season. But I think a lot of that potential rode with the two quarterbacks. Like, you just automatically think, okay, it's Tom Brady. Definitely this team's going to the playoffs. Same with Aaron Rodgers. Um, but right now, if you look at the standings, the the uh, – the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they are in first place in that division, but it's because that division right now is just really a hot mess. Uh, Tampa Bay leads their division with a 3-3 three and three record, tied with the Atlanta Falcons, and then you've got the Saints at 2-4 and four and the Panthers at 1-5. and five. And really, I've got to say, New Orleans kind of starting to look a little special, so kind of watch for that team to catch some steam. Uh, they got off to a slow start, but I do think the Saints could be the team actually coming out of that division when all is said and done. And then if you look at the Green Bay Packers, same thing. They're 3-3, three and three, which six weeks into the season to already be 3-3 three and three for the Packers, that is not a great start for them. So again, uh, you've got the Bears at 2-4, and four, you've got us at 1-4, and four, and then you've got the Vikings leading the whole division at 5-1. and one. And I uh, early on, I said I liked the Vikings in this division. I felt like they were the strongest team uh, in the division. Also, I think some surprises that I just want to touch on real quick, the New York teams, the New York Jets and the New York Giants. I think both these teams are over the expectations of where people thought they would be. Uh, the Jets already had a big win over Miami. Uh, they're four and two on the season so far. They're in second place right behind the Buffalo Bills. And then the New York Giants are five and one and they're right behind the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, which also we got to give the Eagles some credit. They're 6-0. and And do you remember when we were in that close game with the Eagles that we should have won? And I said, we don't even know how good the Eagles are going to be this season. So this could end up being, you know, even a bigger statement game based on that we, we hung with a team like this. Well, so far the Eagles are 6-0. and so the Eagles are a very solid team, and I think we should take some solace in that, that we actually did hang with the dogs of the, uh, the big dogs of the Eagles organization. Uh, some other quick notes, I guess. Uh, Cleveland Browns 2-4. and four. That's kind of where I expected them to be. I mean, they've got quarterback controversy. 
uh, ever since the off season, really. They've just never really had it locked down. So they're continuing to deal with more off the field stuff. Uh, the Steelers at two and four, the first season after Ben Roethlisberger retires, um, looks like they finally have made the switch at quarterback. So we'll see if they can start improving. Uh, the 49ers, with all the con quarterback controversy they had in the offseason as well, they are now back to Garoppolo due to injury, and they're at 3-3 three and three right now. Uh, Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams currently at 3-3. Three and three. So really, a lot of teams are playing 500 football right now. And uh, it's really leading to some interesting weekends because you talk about any given Sunday – it's really the season of any given Sunday. Anybody can beat anybody on any weekend. And that's why all these matchups really are kind of hard to predict right now because a lot of teams are floating around 500, are the good teams, <laughs> and the bad teams are like really bad. And uh, really the Eagles and the Buffalo Bills kind of leading that charge. I guess I'd throw the Vikings in there too since they're also 5-1. and one. Um but then, yeah, everybody else is kind of just floating. Uh, even the Kansas City Chiefs, they're at 4-2, and two, but I don't think they are even really have reached their full potential either uh, this season. So kind of a weird season, but I think that's good for football uh, to kind of have some unpredictability. It's not just your uh, New England Patriots with Tom Brady anymore. It's now, you know, Tom Brady's getting older and Rodgers is getting older. You've got a lot of young quarterbacks coming into the league. You've got a lot of coaching changes. I mean, a lot of change in the NFL is leading to a lot right now of, I think, just mediocrity, maybe similarity, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a lot of teams that are very even right now. So uh, very interested to see how this season goes, uh, especially for the Lions here. So we're going to get into the Lions talk. Like we say, they're coming off a bye week, but of course, before that bye week, they got routed by the New England Patriots, 29 zip. I've already talked about that on the uh, bonus show last week, so I'm not going to break any of that down. I just kind of wanted to touch base on that real quick. Um, but what I do want to talk about is the Dallas Cowboys. So let's uh, roll some quick footage on the Cowboys, and then we'll come back on the other side and break it all down. Down the field, it's caught at the 10, and this game is over. The Cowboys win it. He is dead. Down he goes. The ball is loose. It's picked up by Dallas and Armstrong. He's got a convoy. He's going to walk in for the touchdown. They hand to Elliott. He's got it, and then some. Big throw. Just a hand to the front. That is Lane. Here's one of the end zone. Gallup twisting. Touchdown! Tonight, right here in Dallas, we see the dawn of a new day. All right, so the Dallas Cowboys coming in week seven. We head to Dallas to take on the four and two Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys this season really have kind of been uh, not who we thought they were going to be, necessarily. Uh, Dak Prescott, of course, injured again early this year, which has really led to Cooper Rush having to take the reins. And uh, look, Cooper Rush has absolutely done his job with this team uh, in the absence of Dak Prescott. Now, it sounds like they're going to try and get Dak back this weekend. So I would imagine Dak will be playing against the Lions uh, right now. There is no injury report for either team heading into this game. And you know how I hate that on Wednesdays. Uh, I'm always kind of a little too early to where I can't catch a, a proper injury report. But I did look at it right before I started recording. And if I remember, I'll check it again right before we end this show and see if they have anything officially released yet. But as of right now, there is nobody on any injury list for Week 7 for either team. And I know for a fact that's not true. So uh, all I can go by is the latest story I've read as far as Dak Prescott goes. And like I say, uh, Jerry Jones basically saying uh, they expect Dak to be in unless some unforeseen 
uh, you know, injury or I guess uh, acting up of the injury happens where they kind of change their mind at the last second. But again, I would say Dak Prescott will be back for the Cowboys. Now, is this a good thing or a bad thing if you're a Lions fan? Well, it could be a good thing if Dak is kind of still, you know, getting back in the groove from being injured and not playing a whole lot this season so far. So he could be a little off his target. So that could work out as a good thing. Um, and like I say, with the way Cooper Rush is playing, Cooper Rush is doing fine. So I kind of like the fact that we're getting Dak and not Cooper in this case. Now, Dak could come out and just light us up. We know that. Uh, but again, I think Cooper Rush would have had a, a fair shot against us too. Overall, I'll get this out of the way right away. I don't think the Lions can beat the Dallas Cowboys right now. The Dallas Cowboys... A very strong defense. We're going to get into that later here as we break down into the stats. But I just think right now with the way our defense plays, uh, Dallas is one of those teams that I just don't see us having a great um, a great chance against. Uh, the last five matchups, Dallas has won four of the last five, and they've won four in a row. Uh, the last time we've beaten the Dallas Cowboys was all the way back October 27th, 2013. And uh, we barely beat them. We beat them 31 to 30 in that game. So here we go again. We're going to try another matchup. The last time we did play Dallas was all the way back in 2019. So it's been a couple of years. And uh, really neither one of these teams uh, even similar to back in 2019 at this time. Uh, C.D. Lamb got off to a slow start this season. Uh, was really kind of having a rough, rough start. He's kind of started to find his way. He leads the team as a wide receiver. So that is not good news for us at all. And then Ezekiel Elliott, still the running back of choice for the Cowboys. Again, we'll break down their stats a little bit deeper um, as we go. Of course, head coach for the Dallas Cowboys, Mike McCarthy. Uh, he is a veteran. We know him well from his days in Green Bay. And uh, he has, you know... He's had to kind of go through a lot with this Cowboys team, as you always do. Any coach for the Cowboys always has kind of like that New York media almost because the Cowboys are always, at least if anything, they're intriguing. You know, they get a reaction, whether it's good or bad. Uh, some people love the Cowboys and some people love to hate the Cowboys. So the Cowboys are always going to get a reaction. And uh, so I think Mike McCarthy is the right guy to be able to handle that pressure. And again, with Dak Prescott going down, I think Mike McCarthy did did a great job. I think he he brought in Cooper Rush, and I don't think he really limited Cooper Rush to the point where it was like, okay, this is a safe, you know, we're, we're just going to try and be safe here and get by until Dak can come back. I never felt like that. I really felt like as soon as Cooper came in, they really gave Cooper the playbook and said, go, like, it's time to go. So, um Kind of a, a good thing there, and I think that says a lot about your head coach and the uh, the confidence he had for the backup quarterback. Uh, with that being said, I think that's why Cooper Rush did such a good job because I think he felt confident. I think he felt like he was a part of the team. I think he, he knew what this team was expecting of him, and, and he did a great job. So really not too much you can say bad about uh, any of that situation. I'm sure the Cowboys are happy to have Dak back, but I guarantee you, if Dak starts to struggle, it's going to be hard for the fans to keep their mouth shut because the fans just want to win. They don't care if it's Dak or Cooper. At the end of the day, they just want to win. And if they know Dak is getting paid big money and Cooper's not, they're going to expect a lot out of Dak no matter what. And especially with the way Cooper has gotten this team through. I think when Dak went down, if you would have said, you know, week seven going into the Lions, the Cowboys are going to be four and two. People would have been very happy about that. So he's done what he needed to do. Uh, also, kudos to Kellen Moore, the offensive coordinator, because he is, again, truly basically the one that kind of took that playbook and, and let Cooper run with it. So I think, the, I think the Cowboys overall, with Dak coming back, are pretty much going to be in a groove. It's just going to be Dak. Will Dak be in a groove? Will Dak be ready to go? Because these other players playing with Cooper, I think they, like I say, I think they've been running all the plays in the playbook. So they're not really going to have to adjust too much. It's just going to be, is Dak ready to go? And that'll be the million dollar question that we uh, go into. 
As far as uh, from our offensive side of things, defensive coordinator for the Cowboys is Dan Quinn. He's been doing this a long time. And uh, the Dallas Cowboys have a tremendous, tremendous defense right now. So we've got problems because the question for the Detroit uh, Lions coming out of the bye week to me is what adjustments have we made on defense? Defense and play selection. What are we going to do on fourth down? Are we going to continue to go for it on fourth down? Because if we do, that is a recipe for failure. If we have learned some things, we've matured, we've gotten a little more conservative, and we start to punt on fourth down, well, then I think just that alone will help the defense. And I got kind of got into that too on the bonus show. So again, I don't want to rehash uh, what I've already said on that show into this one. So if you if you want to hear more about my thoughts on that and how I think going for it on fourth down has really also hampered our defense, uh, definitely go check that out. But what I want to do right now is I want to get into the head-to-head matchup. And let's pull up the stats and let's just see. How do these two teams match up head-to-head? Okay, guys. So here it is. uh, Week 7, Lions at Cowboys. And right away, you can see, jumping off the chart again, the Detroit Lions, definitely a favorable offense versus the Cowboys. Now, the other impressive thing I want to say about this is the Dallas Cowboys have yet to have their bye week. So even with an extra week of offense, the Detroit Lions still ahead of the Dallas Cowboys. That tells us just how red hot this Lions offense has been. And look, there's a lot of Lions fans that are very angry with this team right now. They're already talking about fire Dan Campbell, fire the front office, get rid of Goff. I mean, they just want to, you know... Burn burn the franchise down. I do not agree with that at all. And I think we are being very uh, almost just unrealistic to think that we weren't going to struggle this year. And I think what we should be doing is actually praising how much better our offense is this year. And really just trying to dig into, okay, what do we need to do to get this defense better? But instead, everybody always wants to throw away the head coach, throw away the GM, throw away the players, restart. Like, that's not how a winning franchise handles things. And again, we've got to celebrate the the victories. And I think this right here is a classic sign of if you've got the Dallas Cowboys, who are 4-2 and two in a very tough division right now. We've already talked about the Eagles. We've talked about the Giants. And the Cowboys are 4-2. and two. And they don't have as good of an offense as the Lions. I still say we have to just focus on shoring up our defense and making better play calls on fourth down and third downs. So we're not in so many fourth downs. You do those two things. I'm telling you, this is going to be a night and day uh, change. And we could see that in the second half. But let's get into the stats here. Head to head. Here we go. Offense. Let's start there. Passing yards, total passing yards between the two teams. The Lions have almost 300, well, 200 passing yards more than the Dallas Cowboys, even though they played a week less. They're ranked 20th in the NFL right now, and the Cowboys are ranked 26th. Again, the Lions have not played as many games as a lot of other teams. So now they're ranking at 20, really not completely fair because so many teams have had so many more reps and uh, more game time than the Lions. However, it is what it is. We'll just stick it with with this, with what the stats are right now. Lions have thrown 11 passing touchdowns. Dallas Cowboys, five. Rushing yards. Detroit, 757 rushing yards. The Cowboys, 713. And I'm telling you, Ezekiel Elliott has been very good this year. So the fact that we still are outrushing them with a week less, very impressive. And that that really needs to be uh, highlighted. Detroit Lions, seven rushing touchdowns. Dallas, four rushing touchdowns. Penalties. Detroit's been penalized on offense 30 times. The Cowboys, 42 times. So big difference there. Lions right now are tied for sixth place in penalties. 
So we have really cleaned that up because that's one thing the Lions have always struggled with were penalties. And this year, yes, we're gonna you're gonna get penalized here and there, and some of our penalties just come at really bad times, so it just seems to make it even worse. But overall, we've really cleaned up our penalties. So kudos for that as well. Let's get into points. Points scored. The Detroit Lions, with one week less, have still outscored the Cowboys by 30 points. We are the 12th team in the NFL in points scored still. 140 points on the season. That is impressive. And that's with being shut out against the New England Patriots. So again, we can fo- we can harp on that game and we can say what an ugly game that was. And it was. But that was a game going into a bye week, which for some reason the Lions always struggle with. And I'm telling you, when we came out of the bye week last year, that's when our team turned things around. So I would expect the same thing this year. I think we're going to come out a little bit better of a team than we went in. And I think it's going to be because we had time to readjust, look at some adjustments we wanted to make, maybe player personnel we wanted to change up, and, and we're going to go. So let's not hold that New England game as the be-all, end-all of how we see this season because that would not be a fair representation of what we've done so far. Total yards. 2,059 total yards for the Detroit Lions. We are the 15th uh, NFL team on offensive total yards. That is, again, very impressive. Very impressive. Because I I think only five teams had a bye week last week. So that means basically 27 teams have played in more games than the Detroit Lions, but yet we are 15th in the NFL right now. Quarterback rating. This was a good one because I've talked about how good Cooper Rush has played. Detroit's quarterback situation, 93 is the quarterback rating for Goff this season. That is 11th in the NFL. For the Dallas Cowboys quarterbacks, combined, 74.9 quarterback rating. That is 30th in the NFL. So again, Cooper Rush is doing enough to get wins. Jared Goff is playing even better. So what is the problem? It is the defense. It is absolutely the defense. And I think we all know that. So again, I'm not for firing the coach, firing the GM. No, we just need to clean up our defense. Interceptions thrown, both teams identical here, four. Four interceptions by each team so far this season. That ties them for ninth place. Times sacked. The Detroit Lions offensive line has been great this year. We've talked about them. They have only allowed seven sacks on the season. The Dallas Cowboys have allowed nine, so they also have a very good offensive line. The Lions tied for first place. The Cowboys tied for third place. Fumbles lost. The Lions have fumbled the ball three times. That's it. They are tied for first place in that category as well. Who are they tied with? Well, they're actually tied with the Dallas Cowboys, who also have only fumbled three times. Third down conversions. Let's talk about conversions because this is where it always goes bad for the Lions usually. Third down conversion, Lions convert 36.9% of the time. That is 23rd in the NFL. The good news is well, that's better than the Cowboys, but that's still not good. We've got to do better than that. Cowboys convert 32.1% of the time. Fourth down conversions, Lions convert 44%. That's 18th in the NFL. The Cowboys convert on fourth down 50%, but I guarantee you they've had a lot less opportunities or attempts, I should say, to do that. But either way, Cowboys ranked 12th, Lions ranked 18th. And finally, in the red zone, the Lions, 75% of the time, we are scoring in the red zone. Again, that's a major improvement from years past. Cowboys, 50%. So we are third in the NFL when it comes to the red zone. Cowboys, all the way down at 20th. And then finally, field goals, we are dead last, 667 Uh, We've attempted six field goals. We've hit four of them. Cowboys have attempted 16 field goals and have hit 14, uh, which puts them at 87.5%, and that is tied for 13th. 
Okay, so let's move on to the defense here and look at the difference. You tell me what the difference is, guys. It is absolutely all about the defense this year for the Lions. The defense has let us down. The defense has lost us games for sure. Now, again, there's things Dan Campbell can do to assist our defense. But at the end of the day, it is the defense that needs to be corrected. And this is pretty obvious when you look at the difference here. But let's go through them real quick. As for the passing yards allowed, the Cowboys have allowed 1,101. The Detroit Lions, 1,305. Again, though, that's with one less week. So the Cowboys, pretty much that's a big difference. Uh, even the ranking tells you that. The Cowboys, fourth place. Lions, 15th. Passing touchdowns allowed. Cowboys have allowed six. Lions have allowed eight. Eighth place by the uh, Cowboys. They are tied for eighth place. Lions are tied for 13th. Rushing yards allowed. Lions have allowed 838 rushing yards at 29th in the NFL. They are really bad against the run this year. And that, that is surprising. Um, so hopefully we can improve that. As far as the Cowboys, they've allowed 724. They're 19th in the NFL. So they are not great either, but they are better than us. Big difference here, rushing touchdowns allowed. The Detroit Lions have allowed 10 rushing touchdowns. That's 31st in the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys have only allowed two rushing touchdowns. They are tied for second in the NFL. That is a major, major difference there. Uh, penalties. The Detroit Lions defense has been hit with 32 penalties. Again, that's still a very good number. That's tied for sixth place in the NFL. For the Dallas Cowboys, they've been hit with 36 penalties, and they are tied for 30 or for 17th place. Points scored against. The Detroit Lions have allowed 170 points scored against them. That is dead last, 32nd in the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys have only allowed 98 points. And uh, that is third in the NFL. So again, we talk about what the difference is. We talked about how much, how many more points the Detroit Lions offense has scored than the Dallas Cowboys. But then here's the flip side of that. That's the problem. We're giving up a ton more points than the Dallas Cowboys. Total yards against. Uh, we've allowed 2,143 yards against us. That's 25th in the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys, 1,825. They are ninth. Quarterback rating against. Again, we were really good offensively with a quarterback rating against the other team. But look at how good the quarterbacks are against us. 100.8 rating against us. 28th in the NFL. Against the Cowboys, quarterbacks are 78.1% or 78.1 for the quarterback rating. That is six in the NFL. So a big, big difference between the defenses here. And that's why I do this because it's one thing to just say this stat versus this stat, but to really get the full grasp of just what a difference it is, that's that's major. It's not like, you know, if I would just come out here and say, well, this many categories to that many. No, to really dig into the numbers and see the gap on some of these, it's just, it's, it's definitely eye-opening. Interceptions by our defense. Again, we're not getting a lot of turnovers this year, and that's another problem that we're having. We've only gotten two interceptions this year. That's tied for 23rd. Uh, the Cowboys have gotten five interceptions. They are tied for 12th. Here comes another big one, though. Sacks. How many sacks have we gotten? And I've talked about this as well. If we're going to blitz, then we better be putting some pressure on. We better start getting some sacks. We blitz. A lot. We've only gotten seven sacks. That is dead last in the NFL. Seven sacks. For the Cowboys, they have gotten 24 sacks. They are first in the NFL. So you want to talk about the yin and the yang or the complete opposites? This is the complete opposite. The number of sacks these two teams have had. One's in first place. One's in last place. Enough said there. And that's the kind of pressure we need to be putting on teams is what the Cowboys are doing right now. Third down conversions against the defenses. Teams against us on third down, 50% of the time they are converting. That's, again, dead last. Against the Cowboys, 
35.2% of the time they're converting. That is eighth in the NFL for the Dallas defense. Fourth down conversion. Well, when teams go for it on fourth down against us, 57.1% of the time they are converting. That's 24th in the NFL. For the Cowboys, 50% of the time teams are converting on fourth down. Hopefully we won't attempt any. <laughs> that would be a great thing. Uh, they are tied for 18th as far as the defense goes against fourth down. And then red zone percentage. When teams are in the red zone against us, do they score? Well, against us, 68.4% of the time, they do score. 27th in the NFL. Against the Cowboys, 46.2%. Big difference there. They are 6th in the NFL in uh, red zone defense. And then two more stats here that speak to the pressure that the uh, defenses are getting. Quarterback knockdowns. We've had 15 on the season. We are tied for 21st. Cowboys have had 28 quarterback knockdowns. They are tied for 5th. And then quarterback pressure, just overall quarterback pressure. What are we getting? Again, we blitz a lot. We should be getting a lot of pressure. Only 22.9% of the time are we putting pressure on the opposing quarterback. That is 14th in the NFL. Cowboys, 32.4% of the time, they are putting pressure on the quarterback. They are tops in the NFL in that category. So how's it all break down? Well, 11 offensive categories go to the Lions. Only two go to the Cowboys. However, one defensive category goes to the Lions. 14 go to the Dallas Cowboys. So overall, the Lions end up winning 12 categories. The Cowboys end up winning 16, and we tied on two of them as well. So this definitely favors the Cowboys because we've seen this recipe before with other teams where we definitely uh, favor in the offensive categories and the other teams favor in the defensive categories. But the, the gap between these two defenses is really just, it's, it's enormous. It is enormous how much better their defense is than ours. So this is going to be our game to come out and show everybody how much better our defense is, how much better our play calling is, how much better our decision making is, because that's what it's going to come down to, guys. We have to come out and we have to show everybody that we are a changed team. We're a better team. We're a more professional team. We're not doing all these little side tricks. I, I'm over it. I'm over the side tricks. I'm over the fourth down conversions. I'm over the fake punts. Just play a traditional play call game. You know, let's just do that for once and let's just see what difference that makes. Let's see how that helps our defense. You know, so the defense isn't playing on a short field all the time, trying to prevent these offenses from just scoring on us. So we're going to find out what, uh, what exactly it looks like. But I'm telling you right now, uh, to me, that's going to be a key to how this all transpires. Which if we didn't learn a damn thing and we come out and just continue to do the trick plays and, and fourth downs and all that, yeah, it could be a very long second half. I predict that we are going to uh, adjust and that we are going to have a strong second half. We rode a major wave in the second half of that season last year. I think this is a better team than the team we had last year. Uh, the big thing is going to be getting DeAndre Swift back. I think that will help. I mean, as good as Jamal Williams is doing, to have DeAndre Swift there, completely different tool. You know, two, two different tools there. Jamal Williams, the masher, the basher. Um, look, he's got some breakaway speed here and there. He can catch out of the backfield. But it is two different style running backs. And if you can have both of them out there uh, taking the workload off of each other and just mixing it up uh, for the opposing defense, that in itself is an upgrade. So we got to get DeAndre Swift back. That's going to be, I think, the the big part of coming out of the bye week. And I wish the injury report was out because I would like to know uh, what the chances of DeAndre Swift playing are. But with that being said, let's run through real quick some of the big hitters for the, the, the Detroit Lions. Look, Jared Goff has been the man all year. Knock on wood, he stayed healthy. And I think he's having a great season. Uh, at times... Yes, he has thrown an interception here and, and there that has not worked out well for us. Some have been for a pick six, you know, so it hurts. It does hurt. 
But let's be fair to Der, uh, Jared Goff. Jared Goff having a better season than Tom Brady, having a better season than Aaron Rodgers, having a better season than a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL, that if any of those guys were putting up Jared Goff numbers, people would be fawning over them and, and saying how great they are. So let's be fair to Jared Goff. It's not Jared Goff's problem that our record is what it is. It just isn't. So I'll stick up for Jared Goff every week until he gives me a reason not to. And even the game last week against the New England Patriots, Jared Goff did make some nice decisions. Now, probably the worst game Jared Goff has played this season. But again, I'm not going to grade Jared Goff or the team on one game. I'm just not. I, I can say that was a bad game. I can say that was a bad series. I can say that was a bad throw. We can break it down on many different levels. But when you really take the overall performance of Jared Goff so far this season, I'm telling you right now, he's been doing great. Uh, again, I already mentioned Jamal Williams. Really, really, really good this season. He's kind of like the Cooper Rush of the Dallas Cowboys. Jamal Williams got put into a situation that he didn't expect to be in of having to be the lead back for this team. And it's not because of him that we're losing either. He's doing the best he can. And uh, I think he's done really, really good uh, in the absence of DeAndre Swift. Again, better than I think anybody could have predicted. Amon Ron St. Brown right now leading the team in receptions. So he's coming back after last year's big performance. And he's putting up big numbers again for this team. Um, as well as uh, Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds is number two wide receiver on the team. So again, that connection between Josh Reynolds and Jared Goff definitely paying off. They're, they're used to each other and they've definitely got a natural chemistry there. So good job. Both those receivers, by the way, three touchdowns each. So good job there. And then we have seen, I think, a re revised uh, TJ Hawkinson. I think TJ Hawkinson definitely looking more like his old self this season than he did last year. Last year was rough. It really kind of made me question who TJ, TJ Hawkinson was as a player. But I think this year so far, and I think even in the second half here, he's going to show us big things. Defensively, we talked about it. We talked about the struggles, right? We talked about how we got to get more pressure. We do. We have to get more pressure. Right now, the leading sack leader is Aiden Hutchinson. That's not a good thing. Because Aiden Hutchinson has three sacks on the season. And Aiden Hutchinson also... Uh, Aiden Hutchinson also got all three sacks in the same game. So that is one game's performance is leading our team in sacks. That says everything you need to know. That says everything. Uh, as far as solo tackles, Deshaun Elliott, the safety... Leading in tackles, that's not a good thing because that's telling you the offense is getting to the secondary way too much for them to be making the tackles. That's how I always look at that stat. And then Malcolm Rodriguez, love the guy, but he leads the team with tackles for losses. He's only got four. So pressure, pressure, pressure. We need to figure out how we can put pressure on the quarterback. And it's not through the blitz or at least not the blitzes we're calling because we're blitzing more than you ever would have expected us to. And we're just not getting the results of it. So I really cannot wait to see us against the Cowboys and see what adjustments we have made to our team. We cannot come out and look like the exact same team before the bye week after the bye week, we have to make adjustments because that's it. That's our bye week guys. Now it's the lawn haul. Now it's the race to the finish. And I do think with the way the Green Bay Packers are playing, with the way the Bears are playing, this is a division that the Lions should do very well in. We're not out of this thing at all. But we have to figure some things out for sure. Let's talk about the big hitters on the Cowboys side of things. We've already talked about Cooper Rush. Let's talk about Dak a little bit. Before Dak got hurt, he was only throwing 48% completion percentage. So, again, that was one game. I'm not going to overgrade this guy and say he's a bust. I'm not saying that. But I am saying Cooper Rush is playing good. Cooper Rush is playing very good. So Dak's going to have to come out now with that pressure of knowing that if he messes up a lot, 
that crowd's going to be booing them. That crowd will turn on you very quickly. Normally, they'll turn on you for a backup quarterback they haven't even seen. Now that they've seen the backup quarterback and seen that his he's been playing well, oh, they'll turn on you easy if you don't play well. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott leading the team, as I said, in the rushing department. 94 carries, 386 yards, two touchdowns. However, don't forget about Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard, a big break back. He's actually had the longest rush of the season, 57 yards. But on the season, 55 carries, 292 yards, also has two touchdowns. And he also can receive out of the backfield uh, for the Cowboys. So Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott, a very nice one-two punch there for the Cowboys. C.D. Lamb, we talked about him, his slow start to the season. He's fixed that. He's turned that around. He now does lead the team in receptions. 33 receptions on 60 targets, though. So he still does drop the ball a lot. Uh, 409 yards, two touchdowns. And then other than him, it's basically Noah Brown, another wide receiver, 20 catches, 289 yards, one touchdown. Defensively, though, this is where this team is absolutely just on a different level. Donovan Williams, safety, 33 tackles, leads the team. So again, we can say maybe the offenses are getting to that secondary level, and that's why the safeties are making the most tackles. Uh, hard to say, but... So far, that is what it tells with them, too. So maybe Deshaun Elliott, not, not a problem leading the tackle. Uh, both teams, their safeties are, are the ones. But let's talk about Micah Parsons, Trevon Diggs, and Dorrance Armstrong Jr. Micah Parsons, six sacks on the season, eight tackles for loss, 12 quarterback hits. That's one guy. That's one guy putting all that up. Trayvon Diggs. Two interceptions on the season, so definitely got to watch out for him. And then Dorrance Armstrong Jr., defensive end, five sacks. So you got Parsons, linebacker, coming up the middle. You got Dorrance Armstrong coming off the edge. Both guys can get to the quarterback, and that's going to be a true test for our offensive line. It's going to be these two bulls trying to get at, uh, at Goff. And like I say, we've got a good offensive line. Well, let's go prove it because we're going against a really good defense this week. So that's going to be very interesting Interesting to see. Um, we already talked about the kicking game, so really nothing to talk about there. I will say Brett Mayer, so far this season, his longest kick that he's made, 54 yards. So he's got some distance for sure. Um, and for us, I mean, Austin Siebert, hopefully he's healthy, ready to go. And uh, we can start making some field goals and even having opportunities at field goals. Because right now, we just don't have the opportunities um, <clears throat> with the fourth down things that we do. So, if we have the opportunity to kick a field goal, take the three points. That'd be my recommendation. All right, let's real quick take a look at who we'll be facing in week number eight. Okay, so week number eight, as you can tell there, it was the Miami Dolphins. Tua should be back uh, against us. So, again, we got Dak coming back against us. I think Tua will be back against us. Uh, Tua probably going to be back this week, though, so he should get a week in uh, before he meets us, and we'll see how his concussion has uh, healed up. Um, but, yeah, this team, really good with Tua in there. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, not so much. Skylar Thompson, not so much. The backups definitely kind of let this team down. And uh, the game that the Jets won, you can kind of blame that on not having Tua. But also, let's give credit to the Jets. 
they did what they were supposed to do. The big weapons here for the uh, Miami Dolphins, Raheem Mozart, uh, 71 carries, 309 yards, one touchdown. And then Tyreek Hill, absolutely, they're using him like they used him in Kansas City. 50 receptions already on the season, 701 yards, two touchdowns. And then Jalen Waddell, 30 catches, 533 yards. So they've got some major receiving weapons, and that could be a problem for us. Uh, with the way our defense has been playing. So it's going to be major, major factor that we must put pressure on Tua so those wide receivers can't beat us. And we've got to play those receivers really tight, really aggressive. We cannot give them space because if you give those receivers space, they will burn you over and over and over again. So I'm really nervous about this game uh, with the Dolphins. However, if Tua's not 100% or if Tua's not even in the game, then I like our chances. I think this team absolutely goes with or without Tua. It, uh, it makes a big difference. It makes a huge difference. Uh, defensively, uh, they, they do sack quarterbacks, but they really don't have one of those big hitters uh, like uh, the Cowboys did. Uh, Brandon Jones has two sacks. Melvin Ingram has two sacks. And uh, Jaylen Phillips also with a one and a half sacks. So they kind of split that up. Uh, they got a few other guys with one and a half sacks. However, they do force fumbles. They've got five forced fumbles on the season already by five different guys. So f five guys each have one fumble forced. So that tells you that's coached. That's coached that way. When teams can strip the ball like that, that absolutely, they put emphasis on that in practices. So that's another thing that worries me about the, uh, the Miami Dolphins is that they're going to be coming and trying to get turnovers and they're going to have big hitters on the outside uh, wide receiver positions. So this is going to be a scary game. We'll dive all into the numbers uh, next week on the next episode of Into the Lion's Den. And we will then know better as far as how Tua is health-wise, uh, whether he gets hurt in this next game or has to leave early because of maybe, you know, still dealing with concussion symptoms. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how he does. And that would definitely be a game that I would recommend you guys check out if it's available in your area, just to kind of do a little homework and see what we're going to be dealing with. But I do worry uh, if Tua's in there, then what that means for us. But uh, again, if Tua's not in there, I would really, really like our chances against the Dolphins. But one more recap, just one more time over again, just in case you missed it at the top of the show. Dallas Cowboys versus Detroit Lions. I have to go against them, guys. I have to call it the way I see it. And unfortunately, this week, with the defense that Dallas is bringing and the fact that Dallas is at home, I just think that's too much for the Detroit Lions. But what I do want to see is I want to see the Lions compete, and I want to be in this game closely. And uh, I think if we can come out and just put up a good effort, just a good game against the Dallas Cowboys, then I think that would say a lot to everybody about who the, who the Detroit Lions are. Because I think right now, nationally, People are kind of confused. People want to like the Lions. People did like the Lions. But that game against New England did leave a bad taste in everybody's mouth because that did not look anything like the Lions that we had seen up until that point, especially offensively. To get shut out from going from being the the you know the hottest offense basically in the NFL to them being shut out, that was one slap. And then to have the New England Patriots come out and really put up a lot of points. It just kind of put an emphasis on just how bad our defense is. So we've got to come out and show what adjustments we've made in the off season or in the uh, off week. And hopefully we've made some and hopefully they're very noticeable, but uh, a lot of people calling for the head of Dan Campbell, me, not yet, not yet. He has frustrated me with a fourth down, though. If he keeps doing that, that would be the quickest way for me to ask for Dan Campbell to be uh, relieved of his duties because that is not an NFL head coach. I'm sorry. At that point, you're playing, you know, little league football, trying that stuff so much. That's not football. That's not a good strategy, and that is not benefiting your team at all. It's hurting your defense. It's giving your, you know, your offense a bad taste in their mouth when they're not converting on them. It's irritating the fans. It's knocking the fans out of the game. Nobody is happy with these fourth downs anymore, Dan Campbell. It used to be kind of cool. It was kind of your niche, but it has lost its flavor. 
So please stop going for it on fourth downs. I think that's the number one thing every Lions fan would say right now is quit going for it on fourth down. Punt the ball. You have a punter, use him. And you've actually got a good punter. So use him. All right, guys, that's going to do it. I know it's kind of a quick show this week since we we're coming out of a bye week, but I uh, uh, just definitely want to get on here, give you my take, break into the numbers a little bit. All right, guys, so real quick, uh, before I end the show, I just wanted to say I did want to look up real quick. I was able to find somewhat of an injury report on CBS, so let's give them a shout out. Uh, this is what they've got basically for the injury report as of Wednesday. Uh, it says, despite having a bye week to rest up, Detroit still had eight players listed as did not practice on Wednesday. They are Chris Board, a knee, GJ Shark still out with an ankle injury, Taylor Decker says personal reasons, Charles Harris dealing with a groin injury, uh, Melly Fonwu, Ankle, Matt Nelson, calf, Bobby Price, knee, Josh Reynolds, knee. So those were the, the the ones listed. They did say the good news for the Lions is that they had Amon Ross St. Brown as a full participant and DeAndre Swift, which is dealing with ankle and shoulder. He was limited, but he was out there a little bit. As far as the Dallas side of things, Dak Prescott, has been medically cleared and was a full participant in practice uh, on Wednesday. So it seems like he'll likely be making his return against the Lions. Uh, Whiteout C.D. Lamb was the only player who had his practice participation derailed due to injury as he was limited with what the team has listed as a hip ailment. So watch that one closely in the uh, pregame. If C.D. Lamb can't go, that would be a big weapon uh, that would not be available to the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I don't think it would be a make-or-break injury. I think the Dallas Cowboys still have enough weapons. But C.D. Lamb has been coming on pretty hot for them lately. So, uh, again, just something to watch for there. Uh, so, the good news out of this, DeAndre Swift, Amon Ross St. Brown, at least participating somewhat. Uh, but DJ Shark and Josh Reynolds still uh, not practicing. So that could mean they could be out. We'll see. It could just be precautionary, giving them more time to rest up before game time. But uh, that could hurt our receiving core if, uh, if those two do not play. So just want to give you that quick update, guys. And then uh, I did get a little snippet of uh, DeAndre Swift himself when he was questioned by the reporters if he would be playing or not. So let me play that real quick for you, and then we will get out of here. Uh, real quick, guys, if you do want to catch the show weekly, you want to be updated when we have a new show, you can always go to YouTube and subscribe to the Heavy Hitter Network or go to rumble.com and search HH Network, and that will also bring you our shows. Either place you can subscribe, and then it will give you uh, an email that will let you know when a new show drops. So very uh, recommended there just to make it easy for you guys. Also go check out the other shows we've been dropping. Uh, we just did a spotlight show. We did a spotlight tribute show. Uh, you know, so we're putting some content out other than just a lion's show. If you guys weren't aware of that. So definitely go check that out. Uh, but that's going to do it guys. So thank you. Like I say, I'll leave you with the uh, reporter asking uh, Deandre Swift himself. If he thinks he'll be playing this weekend. Have a good night, everybody. Barring uh, a setback later in the week, do you expect to play on Sunday? One more time. Barring a setback, do you expect to play on Sunday? Pushing, I'm pushing two. I'm pushing towards that. Um, like I said, taking it day by day. Taking shots at the enemy I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy If I got something to say, you better let me speak Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything I pop off with the new rock Electronic, blow the sonic roof up I'm too honest when I take a few shots